Welcome to Autosport International. Everything's slowly filling up. Look, we've actually got some empty space, which is definitely not what we're used to here at the NEC. I think you ought to be angry if you don't let oat milk in this Oh, don't bother with oat milk. Just get in whatever. So we forgot to order George's oat milk, so um, if we just like bring it on there, you'll never know the difference, it'll be fine. That's yours. <laughs> Bye. We're actually at the NEC today with the RS police car on the PAAA stand, talking about safe modifications and ethical tuning. Join us today in today's video to show you around what Autosport International has got to offer. We're doing a panel at three o'clock, live okay. Q&A. Mm -hmm. Would you like to be on it? Yeah, of course. On the stage? Absolutely. What's really impressing me is that this younger, this next generation of enthusiasts, the people that are the future of our industry, think what you're saying, that yeah, fit stuff, but make it safe, make it legal, they think that's great. So we're here at Autosport International with Martin from MJ Performance. Hello. They're basically the man behind making this car so powerful. But what I want to ask you is, has this police car been turning heads the same way that it has been over on social media? Yeah, George, absolutely. Um, not surprising. All walks of life have been asked different questions about this. Is it a real cop car? Is it a real cop yeah, yeah, car? Yeah. That's the main thing that they've been asking. But uh, exposure is great. Um, yeah, can't, can't, uh, can't do any more. It's fantastic. This will make Owen laugh. What I keep seeing is people turning up and they'll be like, what yeah. they're actually they're doing looking is for, looking for they're Owen. Looking they're looking for, for Owen, the yeah. man with the bald head yeah. and the yellow jacket. Well, they're, but in reality, guys, he's here tomorrow. Yeah. So. Well, as we said before, you know, yeah, yeah. is it a real police car? Is, a, is, it, is he real? Yes, it is, but it, isn't, but it is at the same time. Yeah, it's confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we'll go into that at a later date. Yeah. See you in a bit. So walking up to this Lambo, I thought it was Corey's, but it's not. It turns out just because it's pink, that doesn't mean it's a friend of ours. It's nice. It's convertible. It's different. That's what we're looking for. No, it's gold. Serious one. On a serious one, come back here. How long is that going to stay gold when it's hot? I'd say 10 minutes. It's cool though. I had to ask, of course, Martin is an avid car enthusiast with experience. Yep. And we've just walked around some of the cooler supercars you can probably see worldwide. I mean, that's a crazy statement, but yep. I must ask. Yep. You're a fast forward fan. Yep. I know the cars that you've got at home. Yep. What would you choose out of everything here? What would you choose? Um, well, I'm a Ferrari man. You're a Ferrari man. See, we didn't so know this. So it would be the Ferrari. This one over here. Yeah, so it would be the 488. Keep it yeah. simple. 488, Luke Stream car as well. Yeah. The guy behind the camera, guys, in case you didn't know. 488 Ferrari. Nothing against what we see here, but I wouldn't have it like that. Have it so we own big powered RSs, yeah. big powered STs, yeah, yeah. owns a business, he's very good at what he does, and he would choose the Ferrari Absolutely. 488. Yeah. Had to know. ST's going, Focus ST's gone, we get one of these. And it's cooler than the Focus ST, so this replaces the ST, what do you guys think? So now I introduce you to Mark McCann's Lambo, widely renowned on TikTok, social media, all over the place, for being the filthiest Lambo you'll see. And that's because he does mad stuff like drifting on fields. He drives it properly, so I respect to him. But yeah, if you wanna go check out Mark McCann on YouTube, go ahead. But as you can see, he hasn't spent hours detailing it. Owen, he's actually driven it properly like a boss. Context for this GTR. Walked past it, police line do not cross, immediately curious as to what actually happened. Firstly, cream developments. This car was stolen, and to my knowledge, it's one of five wide-body GTRs worldwide, full stop. And obviously that's what they do. Now, when this car was stolen, the internet made it so untouchable to the point that the thief actually left it in an underground car park and didn't want any association with it whatsoever. So, Cream got it back with the keys. That's all you need to know, but that's why the car is in this condition, not looking perfect, but what a cool story. Never would I think that walking through the NEC and not only coming across a Tesla, but also discovering that electronic tailpipes are now a thing. Now, as you can see down here, we have an electronic tailpipe. And believe it or not, this car, which was before previously completely silent, which might have made car enthusiasts not want an electric car, with their technology is now able to make an array of different noises from an Audi R8 to a futuristic spaceship to a hot rod, Dodge Rams, Corvette, Stingrays, basically all kinds of crazy cars. Now I'm gonna jump inside and put it to the test because they've told me it does this, but I've not yet seen it in person. So let's jump in, let's see what this thing sounds like, and I get Luke to go near those electronic tailpipes. Right, so guys, now I'm in the car with the phone in a position that I can change any of the sounds that I choose. So, this is the Corvette Stingray, is that correct? 
Okay, so I can just go through this, and this is an Audi R8. Look at this, look. Look at all these options. I can click on a BMW M4. This is so, so cool. Honestly, innovative ideas like this is exactly why we come to Autosport International and it's meeting these people that further show you guys that it's not all about banning the cars that we enjoy the most. It's about making things better, but also trying to make it more appealing. And that's only going to improve as time goes on. But technology like this is exactly what we want to be seeing. You had one of these when you were younger, didn't you? What's that? A Lamborghini? Oh, no, an Escort. The Escort, no, that's a little bit before my time. Though. Was it really? You're not yeah. that old? No, no, I'm not that old. You sure? Thank you. No. <laughs> it's a cool car, though. GTR, though. Take your fancy a little bit more than that. Yeah, I like the GTR. You do? Yeah. Yeah, I'd actually quite like one of those. It's almost like he's being recognised. They've made the YouTube channel now. <laughs> Absolute legends have just made the YouTube channel. There we go. And George, coming to you, you've become something of a broadcasting phenomenon. So you've gone out, obviously, as a modifier yourself to create a channel that shows people initially how not to do it and then very quickly the correct and legal way to do it. So obviously you've made a lot of content with Owen, which has become literally viral sensations. So just, just explain to people here that may not know what the channel is, the kind of content you produce, and the reaction that you're getting from primarily a younger audience on what you're doing. Wow, so where do we start? Um, I think like most of the people in here, especially in my age group, started off with a passion for cars, going to car meets, embarrassingly enough, McDonald's car parks, B&Q, the lot, every all stereotype all you can it. imagine. And the same way that I discussed yesterday, when you're on Amazon, you see products and you think, oh, that looks cool. We'd go to car meets and we'd see a screamer pipe or we'd see a new set of wheels or a new spoiler. And the first thing I'd do when I got home is, spoiler for a Focus ST, buy. But there was nothing in between my purchase for that and me and my friends fitting it that gave me an understanding of whether it was allowed, firstly, whether it was functional, whether it did anything, whether it was a good use of my money as well, as my mum, I'm sure, would have commented. And I just made videos that were popular to the car community for whatever reason. During lockdown, um, I got a knock on the door with this man and a colleague of his. I can't remember his name. And he just said, look, we've, we've got a user group that's really struggling. We're really struggling to engage with them. And I, I don't want to say it was a cry for help because it wasn't because he could have done a lot of it on his own. But it was, look, I like your standard on the videos. I like the way you come across. I had other options, but let's do it. And we, we started some videos together. and. Yeah, never thought it would do as well as it did. And now, I mean, Owen, correct me if I'm wrong, we've probably got one of the, the most successful police road safety campaigns on social media ever, purely off the back of making some silly videos on our phones. Yeah, it's, uh, from the police inside, it's the most successful social media campaign that the police have ever done. Um, road safety or not, it's just the most successful social media thing. Um, and for me, it was when I was young, um, and I was young once, uh, <laughs> if I was modifying my car and I didn't know what I was doing, I would go and speak to somebody that I knew and trusted, knew how to do it, um, and we would do it properly, sometimes. Um, but sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully most The truth is coming out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, edit that. Um, but uh, these days, you've got social media. So rather than going and finding somebody like Martin from MJ Performance, who helps us with our car, people will put on a social media group, can I cut the springs on my Clio? And I'm looking at it thinking, oh my god, no, because uh, we know how dangerous that is. But you've got Facebook experts that will come on and say, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, just do it. You'll never get caught. Um, but for us, a cut spring, as anyone here who's into modifying cars will know, is inherently dangerous and causes the collisions on the road that sees people dying. That means we go out and deal with it and then we have to knock on the door to say that somebody's not coming home. Not tonight, not tomorrow, not ever. You'll never speak to them again because those springs that they cut have fallen out of the cups and that car has gone into the field and that person's rolled the car and died. Owen has just spotted. Mark McCann's filthy Lambo. What have you got to say? As an OCD car fan like you, what have you got to say I've, about yeah. Mark McCann's Lambo? I think I've found the dirtiest car in the show. Uh, <laughs> dirtiest car, for sure. Where's Just the window? to show you quietly how bad this is, please do not touch the car, not even with a microfiber. 
<laughs> no, definitely not with the microfiber, it'll get it dirty. It's extreme though, but it's driven properly, that's what matters. So a friend of mine popped up and has just introduced me to this man. Now, when I tell you that this man is worth being introduced to, you, obviously going? you have kindly said that you actually watch our videos already. I have indeed. He's a bit of a car scene kid and uh, Zach's about to tell you why. So yeah, Yeah, well ahead. we uh, started on social media several years ago. We had, uh, we started to collect cars effectively because okay. um, we had a passion for all things with four wheels and two wheels now. Fiat 500s, that, that type of car? I don't have or? a Fiat 500, I you want don't. one. But you we don't. do have things like okay. the Koenigsegg, we've got some Formula One cars, some Le Mans cars and the Kuntash and racing, a bit of everything. We've got a little bit of everything. I thought my Focus ST was cool. Excuse me, I'm drooling now. I thought my Focus ST was cool, the Police RS is cool. I mean, I've got some friends with some cool I mean, cars, but I've... The RS, that's a cool You're car. probably younger than me, man. Ah, oh, but the, the RS is a cool car, regardless. It's like, cool, Fords yeah, are it's cool. cool. It doesn't matter what But you've just flexed on us. Anyone watching this YouTube video, I've got Koenigsegg, I've got Ferrari, I've got the Countach. Now, on the talk of the Countach. Yes. Tell us about your experience with the police, because well, that's, of course, why they're here. What yeah, happened? Yeah, fair. So, it was an honest mistake, okay. and luckily I found a policeman that understood that. So, this car was in restoration for several years, and when we finished restoring it, the one thing a lot of people forget, and it's something we did forget, yeah, yeah, is yeah. tax and MOT. Okay, yeah. Now, happens. I decided that the worst place to take something like a Kuntash would be London. So, I thought, okay, I'm going to take this into London and drive it around and just have a giggle. The first thing I noticed, the brakes didn't work, so I drove it around just using the handbrake and I thought oh god this is sketchy this yeah. is sketchy but I'm gonna keep going got to about one o'clock in the morning driving through Piccadilly and blue lights light up and I'm thinking well I expected it young and a noisy Lamborghini yeah they must have thought you stole you it know, I yeah mean, yeah it's a rare and car this guy comes up to me and he goes you must be really you know confident I said why is that and he goes your car hasn't been taxed to MOT since 2017 and I was like, oh, right, that's a problem. And he goes, why is that? I said, I explained to him, it's just come out of restoration. He goes, well, let me have a look around the car. Do you mind if I have a quick inspection? The headlights were barely working. The brakes didn't work. The indicators, I found out, didn't work. And so the restoration was good, but the problem was the last little final bits. So I had that thing where you're like, I just want to get in the car and go. So I got in the car and went. But luckily, he was like, he just turned around to me and goes, dude, listen, if you're confident enough to take it into London, just get it sorted. And I got it sorted the next day, so it's all good. The thing is, is that it was very much good policeman at the right time. Good I mean, policeman, been, right time. Could have been a nasty slap Fluky on the scenario. Fluky scenario. Complete chance. But yes. what you can learn from this is, yes, absolutely. If you have a Kuntash, you're clearly doing very well for yourself. But if you do have a Kuntash, make sure tax it's MOT. and MOT it. Yeah. Lesson learned. Love. Zach, there you go. You're a legend. I will link his good. YouTube channel in the description section below. If you want to go see some sick cars, you know where to go. But for now, I think we need to go and have a look around some of your amazing collection. Yeah, let's do for it. Sure. To, Very uh, nice meet to meet you. you. What do you think? It's incredible. I love it. It's like a combination of like the modified car scene and obviously the police that we tend to see frequent the meets as well. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of it's it's what I've got a passion for. Yes. Against what I do for a living. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. You know, it's just about using that to educate and engage yeah. with people that like going to the car meets and not watch your videos. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, it's great. For, I wish you were a bit more local to me, so you could come to the events that I tend to go so maybe one day you might uh, maybe one day get the chance yeah. to because um a lot of police i notice are willing to let the events go ahead but then obviously it gets to a point as i'm sure you know that they have to step in and and take action and it's good to find the balance yeah and, and that's what's, what's most I mean, at the end of the day if the car meet is there and people are behaving yeah. and, and it's static and we yeah. haven't got the bad driving then we're more than happy to support that yeah but what lets it down is when people start behaving badly and we get the burnouts and the drifting and <laughs> i get that that's exciting yeah but on the flip side we see it when it goes wrong and last year it went wrong a number of times yes. around the country yeah. which i'm sure you're aware mm. of uh, and ultimately people never made it home that night i mean there's a lot of stigma car meet versus police it's always going to be a battle yeah but you yourself on george's channel as well it's a great way to to kind of merge the two 
yeah. and I like the way that it's being done. And ultimately, all we want to do is keep people safe. Yeah. You know, by doing the modifications on this car, we show you how to do it properly and legally. So then you don't get stopped by us. <laughs> yeah. You don't get tickets because yeah. you know that's the whole thing of it. You don't get tickets yeah. if you do it right in the first place. Um, and then we can redeploy our resources where they're needed more, yeah. rather than dealing with a car meet. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, that works for us. But, you know, like I say, ultimately, we want everyone to get home safe at the end of the night. Yeah. And, and that's what it's all about. It's been absolute carnage here, guys, honestly. The amount of people that have come to say hello, we are endlessly grateful. But it's about time we show you how great the car looks. And it wouldn't have been possible without all of your help. So, Luke, show them how cool it looks.